basically learned no. We've quite literally learned nothing. We've quite literally learned nothing, actually. Well, we have. <laughs> we've <laughs> learned that. Learn now? We've learned that Swarkup is superior in there every way. Go. Actually, that's a very good thing no, to I learn. Know. <laughs> it's an argument for another day. Okay, what have we done now? We have. We will make a PowerPoint in five seconds. Differentiated. We can we can debate. And then I can uh, we can okay. add another column. Okay. So. Oh my. If we want to consider any one of these things at any given point, if we have displacement, and we want to find velocity, it is displacement over time. Okay. If I have velocity and I want to find acceleration, it's equal to velocity over time. If I want to find acceleration and I have displacement, then I need to take the second derivative and I can also find acceleration. Okay, so I have these tools in my pocket, depending on which equation. Okay? I, can, I can go between from one down to the next. So, if you have displacement, you can go all the way down the line. If you have velocity, you can go down the line. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Except we also learned that we can go back up the line, okay? So if we go this way, because notice how if I have velocity, do you see displacement anywhere here? How do I get, how do I get there? How do I go back from velocity to displacement, because maybe I only have velocity, I only have the speed, maybe I've been sitting there with a the camera recording the speed in my car, and drawing a graph, or computer software has been graphing my speed, and it comes up with an equation. We've been using Desmos. Or Desmos, <laughs> yeah, right? Desmos. And now I want to calculate my displacement. Now we learned, how can you calculate displacement if you have velocity? Integration. Even before that. If you had simple speeds, simple velocities, we could find area, the, under the area under the graph. Except what happens when we don't have a linear velocity and we have a curved velocity graph? <laughs> we can't calculate the velocity because there's no such thing as the formula for the area under a parabola. Okay, so we need to have... That would be very interesting okay. to find the... So we learn to integrate in order to go backwards. And so we can either integrate to go backward from here, or most commonly it's because we have this guy and we want to go back to displacement. Okay. So displacement, he's at the top, and then you can go down to acceleration. And if you have acceleration, well, sometimes you think, well, then I'm stuck, because how do I go back up? But we know how to go back up. Okay, we can integrate to go back up. So if you're following along in your textbooks, we've actually already jumped to the next topic. Yeah. Oh, wow. Damn. Yeah. Huh. We're moving fast. Well, acceleration as a derivative of velocity shouldn't be anything new to you at this point. Right? Because it's exactly the same as Finding velocity when you have displacement. We just take the derivative and we can go from there. So hang on, so we're going to do displacement as the integral of velocity. There we go. Velocity as the integral of acceleration. So I want you to think about these and two concepts and I want you to think, are you actually going to learn anything new? How did I teach you integration? With velocity. I taught you with dis displacement and velocity. Okay. Now we're actually just going to look at it from a physics point of view and you're going to learn nothing new, we're going to use the skills that we learned integrating in a practical environment. The questions are just going to become a little bit more weird. weird. Now, one big thing I want to point out is when we were integrating, we weren't considering distance and speed. We were only considering displacement and velocity. Okay, remember displacement is just a change in position. If I walk this way, and I walk back, what's my displacement? Zero. Nothing. How much distance did I go? Well, maybe one meter this way, one meter back, my distance was? Two. two. So distance cares about what the velocity and the displacement is 
Whereas displacement and velocity, they're like, eh, I don't care. Okay. So that's one of the things that we're going to have to look at. So we actually did touch on it very briefly for a second when I taught you how to integrate. And I, want, I wonder if you can remember when I used the word signed and unsigned area. Do you remember when I said those words? And we never looked at it again. Uh, no. You, you probably, well, you probably weren't wondering, but maybe you were wondering. Why was he talking about this and we never looked at it again? Okay, we are going to look at it now <laughs> and we're going to see why. So pull up your notes, please. <laughs> pull out your notes from way back when. I can actually, uh, when did we learn it? All the way back in pure maths under? Mm -hmm. In term 1b, I think. Area under a curve. Okay, so here are even the notes from the questions, right? And here we go. There's signed area. Do you see the area at the top? Mm -hmm. It's positive. Because remember, when we are working on area, what we're actually saying is thousands and millions and infinite amounts of rectangles. And the rectangle is length times a tiny little change in width. Except we're using the x-coordinate as the height. What can you tell me about the x-coordinates when you go below the x-axis? They become negative. negative. So all your areas become negative. negative. Yeah, but minus times a positive is always going to be minus. So when we add these together, or well, not always, but, but we, we will end up, if this was a displacement time function, the positive displacement is my displacement in that direction. The negative is another. But I, I travel further in the negative direction, so my displacement is going to end up in the negative side. But how much distance did I travel? All how, together, we're going to have to add, turn have to, them. I would have to positive. add those together. Okay? So what we're going to look at is unsigned area. When you integrate, so when we do that funny square bracket and we integrate, it combines these two things together and gives you the combined area. But if we want distance, we need to consider these things separately. What divides positive and negative area? A line. The mathematician. A line, you know? Because you know, negative. As the soon positive, as it crosses which, as soon as it crosses the x-axis. So what coordinates are going to become very important to you? The origin. The? Intercepts and the origin, okay? Fortunately, we are only going to consider things that start at zero, which is nice. Because sometimes your starting displacement isn't here. Say I consider Wolfish Bay as not positive. Swaffelkmunt is positive. That's the starting location. <laughs> are we in the origin at the moment? No. No, we are 36 kilometers away from the starting position. So our displacement wouldn't be zero. It would be up here somewhere. How many meters is that? Uh, 3,300 3, meters. 000. Yeah. So we would be very far away from our starting area. 36,000 meters, that's a long way. So, as I said, in time. reality, hmm. you're not about to learn anything new. Okay? We're just going to start calling them different things. Remember, you integrated like this. But we don't have x's and y and displacement and stuff like that. We have acceleration. We call change in velocity over change in time. We don't call it dv over dt. We have a name for that and it's called acceleration. We don't actually, actually, this is acceleration. But we're lazy. We don't like to write it like we just like, we'll give it a letter and its letter is a for acceleration. But Actually, you can go backwards. If you have acceleration, you can change it into dv over dt. These two things, they mean exactly the same thing. So it's the moment you see acceleration, you can change it into dv over dt. Okay. I'm going to show you how that works in a second. So what is the name of the topic, Dominic? Mm. Displacement as the integral of velocity with respect to time. <coughs> as the integral, integral of velocity. Of velocity. Okay, and with respect to time. With respect to time. WRTT. Because I'm not writing that out. 
Oh, look at Audi. So, what was integration? Integration was going oh, up a level now. Yes. And we're going upwards. So this just means that if I have velocity and I integrate, I can get back to displacement. Okay? Now, think back to when I taught you integration. What, who always popped up when you integrated something? Charlie. Charlie, okay. Now, fortunately, in most cases, we aren't going to consider the, uh, displacements where we don't start from the starting position. Okay. So what's Charlie always going to be? Zero. zero. He's going to be zero. Because remember, Charlie's at y-intercept. Yeah. But if we start in at time zero, at no displacement zero, there's no, in, there is a y-intercept. It's a zero. Okay. So just to make life a little bit easier. If this was mathematics, proper mathematics, do you think we would start at zero? No. Nope. <laughs> no, they would give you some random starting location. But then again... Which is actually not something difficult. We would just have to give you a... Point on the line. I'd have to tell you what your starting location is. If I said at time zero, you're in Wolfish Bay, what would you substitute in? T equal to zero, displacement equal to 36,000 meters and you would get the constant of integration. So, in a nutshell, we can, what's the word that we learned? Differentiate. Differentiate. What can we differentiate? Displacement. Fine, what can we find? If we differentiate displacement, uh, we can find the velocity. Velocity. Okay. And guess what? We <laughs> can do what? We can differentiate. Integrate. Oh, we can integrate. Integrate. What can we integrate? We can integrate velocity, velocity to, find time. Uh, to find displacement. Now, um, do you remember we actually did this when we integrated? And we said, if we differentiate something, we can reintegrate something. But unfortunately, that ended up with that scenario where we ended up with who? Charlie. Charlie. We called them indefinite integrals. We call Why? Because there were infinite number of them. In other words, I would have to give you some starting displacement for you to find out the actual function for displacement. Okay. And like I've said, fortunately, they usually start at the origin, so it's just zero. Um, right, so if we consider velocity, what is velocity? So the x of velocity. Change in displacement over change in time. Remember, when we change displacement with respect to time, we get the derivative of displacement time, which we very conveniently just change to v. So if I have v, I can just change it into that, can't I? And how do I do that? Well, Let's multiply both sides by t. And if I want to consider that change in displacement, and I want to find the actual displacement, remember what did we have to do? We had to add, do you see how we're adding up lots of little rectangles? Velocity, that gives me the height of the velocity graph. That tiny little change in time is? that tiny little change on the x-coordinate. And how many of them am I adding up? An infinite amount of them, right? And what, what symbol did we use to show the sum of many millions and infinite number of things? No. The integral symbol, okay? So if I want to find displacement, I need to integrate, add up lots of tiny rectangles. And that's how we get to the displacement. So displacement is just the integral of velocity with respect to time. Yes, we almost make like a square with that, where it's just like 
Oh, it sounds like a ladder going up and down. So. Yeah. And, well, guess what we're going to do in the next one? We're going to start with acceleration and go back up to velocity. So Monday's lesson is <laughs> going to be done already. We're just going to look at it from the acceleration point of view. Okay? So we're going to have a look quickly in your textbook at this that uh, I will draw it up on the board as, as nicely as I can. Let's have, a, let's have a consideration of this velocity graph, okay? So remembering that this is velocity, okay? So we start at A. What can you tell me about the velocity at A? It is. Is it positive or negative? Positive. Positive. So am I going in a positive direction or a negative direction? So if I say walking towards the wall is positive, am I walking towards the wall or am I walking away from the wall? Well, consider the value, because remember velocity cares very much about the value. The value is positive. Why is the graph going down? It's, it's now because slowing you down. Are you're slowing down. down while you're so away from the wall. This is not a displacement time function. If this was displacement time, that means you're walking back to your starting location. This means you're walking away from your starting location, but you're just slowing down. So in other words, I started off quickly and now I'm slowing down. What happens at B? I stop because the wall's here. You mean C? You hit the wall. No, no, no. B. 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 What's the velocity at B? Zero. Zero. Look where it's cutting the x-axis, it's zero. And then what happened? I turned around and I... Which well, direction well, am I going now? Uh, you're still going that way though. No, no. Look yeah. at my velocity. My velocity is now negative. Negative Wait, velocity and, means and, that I'm going in the and opposite, and the direction. opposite yeah. direction. Oh, B. Really? Remember, this gives me velocity. I'm starting with some velocity. When I get here, what's, what's this line here? This is the, oh, the x equals to zero line. The y equals to zero line. My y-axis is my velocity. Okay? So I am in increasing my velocities. I'm actually walking faster in the negative direction until I get to about here and then I start. Remember there's that gigantic magnet in that wall that wants me to go in that direction. Okay? What can you tell me about my acceleration at point C? It is zero. It's zero. In other words, that magnet finally got hold of me. But which direction am I still going in here? You're going still that way. I'm still going in the wrong going direction. The wall, but except slowing I'm down. slowing down now. Here I was actually speeding up as I was going away. Except now the magnet was like, hey, 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 no, no, no. Off you go in the opposite direction. Back to the wall. Back to the wall you go. And so it pulls me, and now my speed is increasing. What can you tell me about the velocity at D? You stopped. I stopped and I've now... Turned around. I've changed direction again. I'm not going that way anymore. I'm going, going... towards the wall. I'm going back towards the wall now. Right? So, with velocity... I will build a wall. And I'll make the Mexican... This thing. means you are going in a positive direction. This means that you're going in a negative direction. A negative gradient in this one means that you are actually accelerating. You're just accelerating in the wrong direction. So what kind of acceleration value will you have here? A negative one. But a negative acceleration in a negative direction actually means that you are speeding up. Right? A positive acceleration in the negative direction means that you are slowing down. Right? A negative acceleration in the positive direction means that you are uh, slowing, slowing down. down, and a positive acceleration in the positive direction means that I'm speeding up. So hopefully that helps you too. So everybody confuses a velocity time graph with a displacement time graph because you are considering this as position rather than speed. Right? Don't look at the graph; look at the values. Okay, positive values. Even though the graph is saying it's going down, it does not mean you're going in the wrong direction and you're slowing down. So that's going to be kind of important when we look at integrating later on. Now let's consider that I give an equation to this function. Uh, what's the equation? Um, somebody? They actually give it to you. Velocity mm -hmm. equals... T squared. T squared. Minus 32. Plus 22. Plus 22. 
being nice to you and they were factorizing it for you. Okay? So there's the there's the equation for this velocity function. Okay? So we can actually work out points B and points D, can't I? What can you tell me about the velocity at these two points, B and D? They are? Zero. They're zero. No velocity. Remember velocity is on this, this is zero, one, two, three, etc. At this line here, velocity is zero. In other words, they're the x-intercepts, aren't they? Remember I told you they're going to become very important. That's why Zara, they've actually just factorized that for you already. Yeah. So what are, <laughs> what are the factors of this? Uh, t minus 2 and t minus 11. So what, what is b going to be actually? 2. And what is d going to be actually? 11, 11 seconds. Okay. That gives me the time that the velocity is zero. In other words, where I've changed direction. Right. But what if we wanted to find the displacement of this person? Um, displacement. What could we do? Multiply would be times d. But how many times? Right? Let's say we want to consider the velocity between 0 and 11. 11 times that. V, D, T. So, uh, velocity times change in height. Something like that, yeah. Well, let's consider. What if these were nice solid shapes? What would we do? We would find the area, the area wouldn't we? Under these two graphs. Okay. But we can't do that because we don't know the formula for working out the area under a parabola. It'd be nice if there was one, but all parabolas are different, and so we can't consider one. That's why there is no formula for the area under a parabola. You'd think somebody would come up with one, because then you could teach it in high school. Hey, if you have a curved shape, use this formula. Except remember, a parabola you guys learned in transformations, we can stretch them, we can make them smaller, uh, we can do all kinds of things to them that you can't take into consideration. So we need to integrate this thing to find the displacement function. So let's integrate and consider. If we want to find displacement, displacement is equal to the integral of velocity with respect to time. Yeah, because t is my variable. So let us put some real things in here. We want the integral. What is my velocity function? t squared minus 13t plus 22. What values am I considering? Because if I don't put something in here, don't I get Charlie? There's yeah. two ways I can do this. I can either, well actually no I can't, have a look at my, well I can either consider that the starting displacement is zero, and my starting time is zero and so Charlie will become yeah. zero. Alternatively, some ways you might see this is I start at zero, and I go to time t. You can use either method. I'll show you in a second when we do some examples where this comes from. Here comes the box. The box of integration. Okay, Toya, let's uh, dust the old cobwebs out the integration box. Oh. How do we integrate again? Okay, think about how do we differentiate. We multiply the power down and we reduce the power by 1. So to integrate, we need but to... We divide. Divide and but and first divide. we have... What was... Think about the steps of differentiating. First we divide and then by we By the new power. power. Okay. You multiply by the power, oh, then you reduce you... the power by 1. Okay. So, so when you integrate, you first have to... Raise the power. Raise the power by and 1. And then divide by the new power. Divide by the new power. So okay. if we raise the power by 1, it becomes... 3. 
T cubed. T cubed over, over three. three. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Right, let's do the next one. Minus, I need to raise the power one, it becomes. 13 over 2. 13p over 2. T squared. Yeah. Oh, yeah, squared. Yeah. And what if, oh, that one's nice and easy, isn't it? Because we're going to raise the power by 1, it will just be 22t plus 22t. Okay? And I want to consider from 0 to t. Now, at this point, at this point, either you would have got this, right? But the way you would have actually done it is like this. So let's take these numbers that you've probably not seen before. Let's take them out. Notice how I didn't give you any boundaries. Who do I have to add here? Charlie. I have to add Charlie. There's Charlie. How do I get rid of Charlie? Put boundaries. I just consider that at time zero, my displacement is zero. Okay? So think about what's going to happen. If I make displacement and time both zero, that's going to be 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 zero, so that's going to be? C is going to be equal to zero, zero plus zero plus zero plus zero, which is yes, zero. zero. So we could make it zero, okay? The alternative method that you see in the textbooks, and these are exactly the same, is to stay. My starting displacement is zero, and I'm going up to time t. In other words, whatever time. I'm just replacing my variable with itself which means it's not going to change. Okay, this allows me to say, I don't have a Charlie. Now remember, this is an integration problem. We have to consider the integral. So f of t take away f of zero. What is f of zero going to be? Zero. Zero, zero, zero. What's f of t? If I put t in place of t, what will you get? The same thing. Yeah. T. So in other words, displacement is equal to <laughs> T cubed <laughs> over three. Minus the real T, yes. The T is hot today, it seems. The it's not like iced tea. Well, I mean, the coffee was cold, but the tea is hot. Vanilla ice is upset. He wants ice. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to write this up over here. Ice Displacement tea. is equal to one third mm -hmm. t cubed minus 13 yeah. over 2 t squared yeah. plus 22 t. Peach. Okay. Ice t is the We've done the hard work, so we're going to rub the hard work out. I'm sorry, guys, I'm just stating a fact here. Just the best. Lemon. Lemon. What? The lemon Lipton iced tea mm -hmm. and the peach Lipton iced tea. Right, if I want to find the displacement at 3 seconds, how could I work that out? Um, you put it in 3. Uh, function. Put it in 3. Okay, so let's put displacement equals 3 equals 1 third 3 cubed. So 1 third minus nine 13 is... over 3, 3 squared, plus 22 times okay. 3. Uh, and by the powers vested in me by my very quick uh, it's third, going to be 16.5 meters. Sorry, I was faster than you. Oh. <laughs> well, I would hope so. In my brain, I did say. Okay. So that was my displacement after three seconds, right? But how far did I travel after three seconds? Before you answer that, consider what did I do when I just calculated this integral? What area did I just find? Didn't I just find the area here, and then a tiny bit of the area here, didn't I? Except when I added them together, I got positive displacement, take away a little bit of negative displacement. So, you need to take so it gave me my position. So this is displacement. That's how far I am from where I started. So I think at this point I'm at Long Beach from Swakopanta. Well, yeah. No. Yeah, it's right yeah, around about at Long yeah. Beach. Except how far did I travel to get there? Well, is that meters or? Yes, yeah. minus then you are not. Then halfway. you are not, yeah. Uh, 60 uh, meters. Hey, 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 okay, fine. <laughs> okay, you're like over there on the park. Like, what, you're in the park. No, 16 I meters. I wanted to find up. out. 16 meters. The distance. Like by the park, maybe. If I wanted to find out the distance that I've traveled to get there, how would I do that? Okay, the gate. <laughs> you're at the gate. 
how would I find the distance I've traveled? Uh, Remember, this function doesn't give me distance, mm -hmm. it gives me displacement, it just tells me a position. True. Except, but time's a velocity by the time. Isn't? This is my positive displacement, right? Yeah. So I've traveled some distance there. Mm -hmm. And here's my negative displacement, and I've mm -hmm. traveled some distance there. What if I add those two areas together? If you do that, what would I get? Uh, a positive number. Yeah, right? What if I consider this displacement, because this little tiny bit of displacement here, that's the little bit that I still move backwards. What if I don't consider it as negative? What if I consider it as positive? Hmm. Wouldn't it just be distance then? Right? Now, when we consider things like this, to be positive, we call this unsigned area. In other words, we, we couldn't care what the sign of the area is. If it's negative, it becomes positive. If it's positive, it's positive. Because distance doesn't care which direction you're traveling in, it only cares about a magnitude. Okay. So if I wanted to find out the distance traveled, I would unfortunately have to integrate twice. I would have to consider the integral from 0 to 2 of t squared minus 13t plus 22 with respect to t. And I would have to consider the integral from 2 to 3 of t squared minus 13t plus 22. I can't look at them together because when I integrate, the integration computer just squashes them together. If I want them to be separate, unfortunately I have to consider them separately. And this value here, that's the divide line. That's the reason you need to be able to find your x-intercepts, okay? So that you can see where the boundaries of the two different areas are. Okay, let's have a look at some examples from the textbook. What's the first one? I think it's a nice, quick and simple one. Come on, Dominic, read the question. Well, okay, right. 6.7. 6.7. Okay, a particle moves in a straight line so that the velocity v meters per second mm -hmm. and time t seconds is given by v equals t cubed minus 14. Find the expression for its displacement from the initial position at time t. Okay, so find an expression for the displacement for its initial position at time t. In other words, what's it asking me to find? The displacement. Yeah, displacement. I have velocity. If I want to find displacement, I have to? Integrate. Integrate. Okay, so I can even say Displacement is equal to the integral from of velocity with respect to time. I can state it, okay? And that statement tells me I need to integrate. So either I can assume that displacement at time zero is zero, or I can put in those fake boundaries. Oh, sorry, not six, uh, <laughs> six. T. Mm. Whichever way you prefer. If you want to cancel Charlie out by substituting, or this method is up to you. Okay? So, what we're saying is displacement is equal to the integral from 0 to t of t cubed minus 40. With respect. Okay? This statement tells me to integrate. So, this is where we have to pull out the old box. Okay, and we need to anti-differentiate. So, come on, yeah. rub the cobwebs up. T to the power four mm -hmm. over four minus four over two squared. So, so what's that going to be? Yeah. T squared. Two T squared. Okay. Now, because I went from zero to T, I don't. I'm not going to have a Charlie in my expression. If you didn't have any of these boundaries, you wouldn't have a box, you would have an indefinite integral with Charlie. And then you would either leave it like that, or you would have to substitute something in, a point, to find out what it was. Okay, I've assumed that we're at zero, we're going to t. 
So I need to consider f of t, take away f of 0. What is f of 0 going to be? 0. zero. And so I'm just going to be left with p to the power 4 over 4 minus 2t squared. There's my statement. And this is in meters. Just to confuse you and make you think that there's a variable behind t. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Somebody read the question for you. This is a fun. Oh, 6.8. 6.8. Okay. A particle moves in a straight line, so its velocity v at time t s is given by v equals t cubed minus 5 t squared. Okay. A. Find the displacement of the particle after 5 seconds. Okay, well, this is where we start using our wonderful tools of integration. What do they ask for? Displacement or distance? Displacement. So do I care about signed or unsigned area? No. No, I can just use my integration. So again, I can state if I want, I know that displacement is the integral of velocity with respect to time. And now I can just put the actual values in. So I want displacement. From where to where do I want the displacement? From 0 to 5. So there's my boundaries of this function. Okay. That's like putting the punching the program in. Now we hit enter and now we're going to process the work. So we need to integrate. So this box is your integral. And let's integrate. T the power over four. minus. 3 to the power. Ooh, we're not multiplying, it's 5 over 3t cubed. Raise the power by 1, divide by the new power. From 0 to 5. Okay. So again, I want the function 5 minus the function 0. Fortunately, we can see the function when I put 0, it's going to be 0, because I've got a variable in all my terms. Okay, let's do 5. So we have 5 to the power of 4 over 4 minus 5 over 3, 4, no, 5 cubed. And technically, you should also have 0 take away 0. So this is that part, and this is that part. But if I put 0 in, I'm going to get nothing. Uh, what do we get? I'm too lazy to work this one out. 625 over 4 minus 5. Minus 52.1 meters. So is my displacement in the positive direction or the negative direction? Negative. Yeah, I've actually ended up away from where I started. I, I went that way. Right, if that's positive, I went the opposite direction. Right. B says. Since the velocity time for, for 0 is smaller and greater, oh, mm. Okay, so between 0 and 10. Okay, let's put how that goes. Between 0 and 10. They want the velocity function, velocity time, or displacement time. Velocity, velocity time. Okay, so let's. Uh, oopsie, oopsie, oopsie. V, T. Okay, how would we consider trying to graph this? Is there anything technically difficult about graphing this thing? No. No. Right? What are we usually interested in when we are graphing a function? What function is this? It's a cubic function. Okay. But what common factor is in this cubic function? Uh, t. Isn't it just t squared? I can pull out t squared from both of them. Right. What is the velocity over here? Zero. Zero. Yeah. So won't that give me my intercepts? Okay, so when v equals zero, t equals either zero or t equals 5. Okay. 
So somewhere over here, I'm going to have an intersect. What's it going to be? How do I know? How can I work it out? Which way does a cubic graph go? Uh, like that? It's a positive cubic graph, so it starts from the bottom, goes down and goes up. Well, sometimes it doesn't go down, sometimes it just remains there. Okay, I have a double intersect at zero. So it must come up, go down, and come up. But we're not interested in this part here. So there's, that's it. Oh wow, that's quite easy. Yeah. Think about it. At time zero, what's the velocity? Zero. At time one, what's the velocity? One minus five. So you can already see the velocity has to decrease. So you can even put in some numbers there to give yourself an idea of where is it going. Right, why do you think they ask you to draw a displacement time function? Sketch, uh, work out the distance by the particle travel. Mm, right, mm. between zero and ten. Yeah. Let's have a look at the area between zero and ten. I have some area. below the x-axis, don't I? But I also have a time and a massive amount above the x-axis. If I integrate from 0 to 10, what's it going to give me? Maybe not. My total displacement. Yeah? And I'm assuming the question is going to say, work out the distance the particle traveled. Yeah, work out the distance the particle traveled mm -hmm. in the first 10 seconds. Okay. Find the time when the particle passes through a start position. Okay, well, we'll get to that one second. Okay. How am I going to work out the distance? I need to consider the area to be unsigned. Yeah. Okay. So I can just work out the integral from, well, where does it start? At zero. And where's my first intercept? Five. At five. So I'll go from zero to five. Okay, and that's of t cubed minus 5t squared with respect to time. And then I can also take the next integral from 5 to 10. We actually worked this one out already, didn't we? This was minus 52 something. Minus 52.1. Okay. And this one's going to be 885. That's not the way. Right. So when I want to work out the area, do I care that this is negative? So what do I do to it? Make it positive? I just make it positive. I'm like, screw you guy. You are now positive. You are now positive. Okay? Yes. So that's unsigned area. So if you get asked to work out distance, the first thing in your head must be, ooh, I need to know where the graph is. Anything below the x-axis, I need to work out separate to above the x-axis. And so you have all these separate integrals. If you had a graph, displacement or velocity that did this, uh -oh. how many times will you have to work out the integral? One, two, three, four, five, and as many as that thing carries on until I ask you to. They're not going to ask you in, in an exam, That's but in reality, say. that is what would happen. You would have to consider all the positive areas, and it's not like you can go, hmm, can't I sum all the positive areas up in one go, and then look at all the negative, unfortunately it doesn't work like that. Remember, we have to go between limits, A and B and C and D and E, go to look there, then we look there, then look there. Now, I really hope we don't get a question like that. It would be pretty easy to create an I can actual zero program to just do oh, it for you. Because you can just now all the I want to set. show you based on your understanding and the fact that you have a graph, what can you tell me about that first area? It's going to be positive. Negative. It's going to be negative. It's below the x-axis. Okay? Yeah, so an alternative way of writing the total displacement or distance is like this. Okay. 
which is the positive displacement? The second one, eh? That goes from 5 to 10. Okay, and that's of t cubed minus 5t squared dt. Okay, the next integral is from 0 to 5. It's the same function. I know it's going to be negative, right? How can I make a negative number a positive number? Times by a negative. <clears throat> if I subtract the negative area, what will end up happening? You're going to get a double minus. What's a double minus? Plus. 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 So if I add... So what we're doing here is if we add all the positive areas and we subtract all the negative areas well when you subtract a negative number it becomes positive and technically you are adding so if you have a picture you can add all the positive areas and you can subtract all the negative areas and you can do this in one line rather than having separate stages, looking at all the values, making the positive, right? So you can do it all in one go, okay? And another method of doing this is, again, you have to know what's going on. If I want to get a negative area from the same integral, what can I do? Let's, let's take the positive area. I want to take the positive area, but I want to get a negative value out of it. Then you switch your start and end point. No. Yeah, I just switch the start and end point, because then I'm going to end up taking the big value from the little value and getting a negative number. So if I want to do that for the negative area, again, I can just switch my boundaries. What do we normally put at the bottom? The start and end point. And we put the end at the top. But if I switch them around, it will force this to become positive. And then there's no more subtracting areas, now we're just adding areas. Okay. However, this obviously relies on you knowing what's going on. If you don't know what the velocity is doing, you don't know where your boundaries are. So to work these guys out, they are, you first of all need to know the intercepts and you also need to know where the graph is. If you had drawn this graph like this, you would have considered the area incorrectly because you would have thought this is positive and this is negative and you would have got a completely different answer. That's why we spent that entire chapter on drawing these functions so that you can look at them. That's our homework, right? Okay, just that, yeah. Oh, you're not going to have any homework on the integration. Just the, oh, okay. just the derivative. Okay. Right? Just the derivative. Yeah. Okay. Right, um, I want you to quickly have a look at 6.9. We will go, I will actually do it when we, um, when we get back. But I just want you to look at it for a second. What's the time? We're almost done. So oh, I'm going to do, okay. I'm gonna do it easy, quickly. I just want you to look at it. Because I don't want you to look at that and go, oh my god. You see how we have three <laughs> functions there? Yeah, These yeah. are velocity functions for a tightrope walker. Oh! Why do we have three functions there? I'm just waiting for the displacement to become negative. <laughs> this is just what we call a piecemeal <laughs> function. No! No! Shame! No. Shame. Yes, from from the hopefully we'd be considering displacement in a horizontal direction and not a <laughs> vertical direction. <laughs> Well, generally, if your displacement goes in a negative value quite fast, oh, it means oh. yeah. Yeah. we already know his acceleration. This <laughs> 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 negative ten. Well, actually, you know what? If you do the fancy way down, or like you would um, like rappel down, then it looks fancy, and then you go quite fast. But if you 
go down to that the road. But That's also quite The thing fast. is, he has rubber from his tires, so there might be a little tires. bit of balance. He's a unicycle performer. Oh, I thought we were talking about like mountain climbers. Okay, anyways. Let's have a look at the this. Do you think he dies? You've seen this before. You've yeah, used it many I, times. I don't normally talk yeah? about mm -hmm. yeah. Velocity equals initial velocity plus some acceleration at a time. Okay, that means as we accelerate for longer, our speed gets higher and higher. If we don't stop accelerating, we will get some infinite amount of velocity, right? So what if we wanted to find displacement from this? How do we find displacement? If it's equal to the integral of velocity, isn't it? So let's integrate this function. So if I want to avoid Charlie, I can just say, well, I'm going to start at zero. Okay u plus a t. Right, what's my variable in this equation? Which of these is my variable? I know they're all variables, but which one is the variable? The independent variable? t. t is the one that I'm... You know, I plug in a time coordinate and it will give me my velocity. Okay, This is my variable. What can you tell me about these two guys? What are they actually in real life? They are constants, aren't they? They have to be some constants. So in other words, when I integrate a constant, what happens to it? Nothing. Nothing happens to it. It's like pi. If you integrate pi, do you get pi squared? When you integrated pi, did you get pi squared? No, because pi is a fixed number, it doesn't change, so we don't integrate it. Okay? So, if we want to... Okay, let's anti-differentiate u. What is the t in u? It's t of zero, isn't it? So we increase the power by one, it becomes t, and so we get ut. Right, if I increase the power of t by 1, what do I get? t squared. And I have to divide by the new power, which is? 2. There's your formula for displacement that you've been using. And we could switch the variables around and we could solve that using velocity, final velocity as well. So that's actually where the formula for displacement came from. It didn't actually come from combining equations. Like that's the barbaric method of doing it. This is the, the fancy barbaric This method. is the fancy way okay. of doing it. Okay. So just some interest. Well, don't you have